I don't care if it's popular or not, which I've got to do with whether it's true or not. I have a, nothing but respect for people that are educated in nutrition, but they are being taught the wrong way. If you want to turn your health around, it's not found in a drug. It's not found in, even in a vitamin. It's found in the food choices you make. You're going to get it from all sides that what I'm teaching you is wrong. But use, use the brain that you have been given and you decide for yourself what's true. The truth will set you free. I love life. I really do. But I, love, I want to be healthy for as long as I can be healthy. Welcome to another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. I'm your host, Nikki Ballou. And boy, do we have an exciting guest lined up for you today. Today's guest is one of the world's leading thought leaders when it comes to health, nutrition, and how to live life as the most healthy, vibrant version of yourself. He has been a pioneer in the field of eating appropriately. He's been somebody who's been sharing his wisdom for nearly five decades. He started when he was five. <laughs> <laughs> I am speaking, of course, of none other than the one, the only, the legendary Dr. Tony Martin. Welcome to the show, Dr. Martin. Well, Nikki, thank you very much for that introduction. Now I, I, I'm going to try and get my head out of the door here on the way out. <laughs> But uh, thank you very much. It's uh, much appreciated. And thank you for allowing me to, uh, to uh, join you on your podcast. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, I think we're going to have some fun together. We're going to have a blast. I'm looking forward to it. So, um, Dr. Martin, I, I've been following your podcast and your work for quite some time. A good friend of mine and a client of mine, whom I think we both know, is a man named Mark Ferris. And Mark um, told me about your podcast, and he told me that he'd done the Great Reset back in June of 2021. And um, I thought, okay, let me check this out. And I started listening to your podcast, and I was startled by how to the point your advice was. And it took me a long time to be able to get past all the conditioning I've had around how to eat, you know, <laughs> to, to actually be able to take it in and listen to it because what you say is absolutely startling. And I'm going to let you say it rather than me say it. And I'm really excited to dig into it. But I want to tell you a little bit about our audience first and my listener. My listener is an entrepreneur. They're a, a, a man or a woman who has a big dream and they want to make it happen for themselves. One of the reasons they listen to the show is they want to learn from my guests. Now, not only do they want to learn about what you have to say in your area of expertise, but they also want to learn about how you've been able to stand out because that's a big part of what we teach people to do because so many people are just stuck in that sea of sameness. They have that same Mayo message everybody else has. And they don't know how to show up as the truth, as the best version of themselves. So the market will sit up and take notice, just like I sat up and took notice of you. So before they can open themselves up to you, they got to get to know you. So tell us your backstory. How'd you get to be the great Dr. Tony Martin? Well, listen, it's, uh, it, I mean, it. it's a long story. I mean, the Martin Clinic was established in 1911. Wow. So, you know, we actually had a big 100th anniversary in 2011 of the Martin Clinic. So we've been around a long time. And my grandfather, I don't know what he was thinking. David Martin uh, ended up in Timmins, Ontario. You know, I think if he'd have turned right and gone the same distance, he would have ended up in Florida. But he he turned left and went to Northern Ontario, and that, uh, the rest is history. But listen, we were always, the Martin Clinic was sort of people that thought outside the box. And I got to give you a little bit of background where I come from, where my uh, training was, especially. And 
a, a little bit of history for me. Now, in 1968, I, I found out that my dad was a diabetic. Now, I didn't know anything. I was in high school. I didn't know anything about diabetes other than my grandfather died of it. And so when my dad came home and said, hey, I, I'm a diabetic, I, that scared me. It did. It really did. But the next day, Nikki, the next day, and I'm not kidding you, I hear I'm a high school guy, okay? I'm getting up to go to high school. My dad is jogging on the spot on, on, in the living room. And I, I, I thought he, he flipped his lid. I didn't know that diabetes affected the brain. So here I am. I watched my dad and I said, Dad, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm a diabetic. I have to get into shape. The only people, Nikki, that ran in 1968, you were running away from the police. I mean, there wasn't even jogging. Jogging, that wasn't even a word. But I watched my dad change his diet and change his exercise routine. And he was a real inspiration. My dad, I loved him dearly. I mean, I just thought he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And my dad was my hero. So when I watched him, and he would explain that to me, he said, well, listen, diabetes is a problem of blood sugar. And therefore, you've got to control that. And this is what I'm doing. And my dad ate, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. He ate steak six days a week and roast beef on the seventh. That was Sunday, our family meal. So it, it was meat, 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 meat. I watched him control his, um, his diabetes. And when I went to school in the 1970s, of course, I took 2,000 hours of nutrition. It was all, look, it wasn't bad. You learned a lot of stuff, vitamins and minerals, and you learned all about nutrition. But they were teaching something that I knew wasn't true. Because in those days, and diabetes was, you know, relatively rare at that time, you know, they said, well, you need a balanced diet. You know, the, if you want to know where balance came in, it came in the 19, it came in the 1970s. And that was the food industry, the pharmaceutical industry combined. It was the cereal companies. You know, I, I'm writing a book now, and uh, I actually written 21 books. So this is number 22. This book is, uh, is I, I'm talking about, I have a chapter on two serial killers. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. And, and what I mean by that is the inventor of serial, Dr. Kellogg, and I give the background of him, and Dr. Ansel Keys. They, these two people were, the, were responsible for the two biggest hoaxes in the history of medicine. One of them was cholesterol. And we can go into that if you want later on. I would. And the second one, cholesterol is, is bad for you. No, it's not. I mean, the first day of biochemistry, you learn that without cholesterol, you can't live. But they made it a boogeyman. And then the second one was Dr. Kellogg's because he invented cereal. And he said, you know, you can't have bacon and eggs in the morning. You have to have my cereal because bacon and eggs will give you cholesterol and bacon and eggs are are saturated fat, and, and my cereal is full of fiber, and fiber is the best thing since, well, I hate to use the expression of sliced bread again. But <laughs> what I'm saying, Nikki, the two biggest cereal killers in our history of food, they changed, it was a paradigm shift, and it went, it, the, the results of that, those two guys who influenced medicine and big pharma, what happened was a, a national, international disaster. And the proof in the pudding is this. We have more heart disease. We have more cancer. We have more diabetes. We have more Alzheimer's. You want to know what you're going to die from? Those four things, unless you get hit by a truck. OK, that's what you're going to die from. And they all got worse. And here I was like John the Baptist screaming in the wilderness. It's not true. 
It's not true. It's based on false premises. And so, if you want to know what makes me tick, tick is that. And I got a PhD in nutrition. I have a, nothing but respect for people that are educated in nutrition but they are being taught, Nick, Nikki, the wrong way. And my job, and I used to do it in, in a private practice. I was in private practice for 46 years. And I had a radio show in Northern Ontario for 20 years. And for the audience that would listen, or at least I would show the other side. And I am 100% convinced I'm right. I'm more convinced today than I ever was. And my specialty in my office was mostly diabetes, mostly. Now, I saw tens of thousands of patients from hormonal issues to whatever. But I always started at the beginning, Nikki, always start at the beginning. Because if you want to turn your health around, it's not found in a drug. It's not found in, even in a vitamin. It's found in the food choices you make. And I am consistent. I have been as consistent. I've never changed. I've always said, if someone calls you fathead, Nikki, take it as a compliment. Because saturated fat, your body lives on it. It needs it. It needs protein and fat and carbs, eh, not so much. And so that is where I come from. My whole practice was based on that. Every book I ever wrote was based on coming out with that, what to do, how to change your life. And, you know, just to your listeners, I would say this. Think about it. I, Nikki, I agree with you. Your listeners are people are motivated. They drive our economy, they drive our society, and I have nothing re for res but respect for them because I'm one of them. <laughs> but I got to tell you this, if you don't have your health, Nikki, if you don't have your health, you're missing out on a big, big factor because you could have all the money in the world. But if you don't have your health, and I tell people, look, I mean, I, I'm so passionate about what I do. Because it, it without help, let's face it, it you know life can be. Uh, I I love life, I really do. But I love I want to be healthy for as long as I can be healthy. Wow, that's a heck of an introduction. So let's start to unpack some of that. Nineteen eleven. Nineteen eleven. The Martin yep. family has been involved in the business of making people healthy since 1911. That blows yep. me away. Tell me more about that. Why, well, why did your grandfather, grandfather start you know, this? Well, listen, my grandfather, I, 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 I was born in 1952, so I'm giving away my age, right? Yeah. And all, all I, you know, my, I, I never knew my grandfather because he died in 1952. I was six months old. But I'll tell you, Nick. I listened to story after story after story what that man did. I mean, he would make up, you know, potions. He had protocols from cancer to from your nose to your toes. I mean, he did it all. And, you know, he was the botanist. He was a herbologist. He was, you know, like back in those days, think about it. I mean, you know, in 1911, what kind of medicine did they have? Well, you know, they, they used what they could. And, you know, they were, they were pioneers. So my grandfather was a pioneer. I still hear stories of my grandfather. And my father followed in his footsteps. I was third generation. My son, Dr. Tony Martin Jr., is fourth uh, generate you, you never want Nikki you never wanted to call our office because there was a time that I I was working with my father and my son and they call into the office can I talk to Dr. Martin please well they get a runaround for about 20 minutes well which one you know senior junior junior you know the third or you know we're all Tony Martin and uh that's hilarious <laughs> anyway, we used to laugh about that right 
Yeah, man, that's <laughs> hilarious. That's wild. I totally, yeah. totally love it. So, okay, so your family's been involved in the health space for a while. Um, and obviously, you've all been inspired. It's been a calling from you from a family point of view. That's pretty amazing. And I, I, I want to get into the substance of what you're saying. And near the end of the conversation that we have today, I want to I want to ask you a bit about how this can apply to someone who wants to stand out yeah. of business, because I think that's important to have a discussion with as well. But um, so you talk about why people need to eat the way they need to eat. And let's get into it. Let's get into, okay. yeah. you know, the lies being told by uh, to us by uh, the food industry. Uh, and, you know, I, I heard that um, the folks that uh, were behind cereal were um, folks who ideologically, for religious le- reasons, yeah. were into uh, eating cereal and eating a non uh, a, a non meatarian lifestyle. So can you get into that? Can you educate us a bit well, on all that? Yeah, well, listen, listen. Um, and I, I, I have nothing but respect for people's choices. I mean, if you, you know, someone decides to be a vegetarian or a vegan, Hey, listen, I, 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 I get it. Okay. But I'm a scientist. I'm a food scientist. And I always tell people, look, I mean, why did God give you a gallbladder? And people look at me like I got two heads when I ask them that. What do you mean a gallbladder? They probably don't even well, know what a gallbladder is. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, a gallbladder is uh, a little, <laughs> it's a little, uh, a storage unit for bile. The cereal hoax is that fat is no good for you. Thus, the fat-free diet, Nikki. That's what happened. It was all propaganda. Now, I, I think these people actually believed it, but it was never true. The reason you have a gallbladder, a cow doesn't have a gallbladder, a rabbit doesn't have a gallbladder. They're the ones meant to eat grass. You're meant to eat steak. And you're meant to eat eggs. You're meant to eat cheese. And the reason is, it could, and that's why God gave you a gallbladder, okay? And a gallbladder is there to emulsify fat. And you have fat-soluble vitamins that are essential. You can't live without. And the reason you need to eat meat, eggs, and cheese, okay, is, for, is because without it, you're not getting a complete nutritional profile. You know, in the 19, oh, it was earlier than that. It was earlier in 1920. It was in, at the turn of the, uh, the uh, 20th century. There was a guy, it was actually a Canadian fellow by the name of Stephenson. He got caught in the Arctic. Okay. He, he was an explorer. He, 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 and he went and he lived with, in those days, they called them Eskimos. Today, they call them the Inuit. But he got caught there. His, his ship couldn't get in because of the weather. And he had to spend a whole year with the Inuit. You know what he found out? They're the healthiest people he's ever seen. And then what he did to prove it to people is he actually checked himself in where they could do blood tests, you know, in the 1920s or whatever. Into, the, into a New York hospital, and for one year, they fed him only meat, okay? He ate just like the Inuit do, blubber, fat, and it's all meat, meat and fat, okay? So you know what they found? What? He was the healthiest guy they ever tested in the hospital. Wow. But you see, that got buried because, again, you look at, the way the world turns and the way people, they have an agenda and everything got turned around by, again, this Ansel Keys. He, and here's the story of him. You have to understand this a little bit. In, 19, in the 1950s, President Eisenhower had a heart attack. He was playing golf and he just dropped in a sand trap. And I mean, he had a major heart attack. Now he survived, but because that was big news, 
This Ansel Keys was doing work. He was a pathologist at the University of Minnesota. He was doing work on cholesterol. And he said, I'm going to tell you why President Eisenhower had a heart attack. He was eating too much steak. He was eating too many eggs. He was having bacon and eggs in the morning. And that stuck like glue, Nikki. It stuck like glue. But you know what? He wasn't right. You know why President Eisenhower had a heart attack? He was no. smoking four packs of cigarettes a day. That's right. He, he, he was a big smoker, wasn't he? Yeah. In the 1950s, everybody smoked. My dad smoked. My mom smoked. My dad used to give cigarettes to his patients. He said, oh, you got a cough. Here, have a cigarette. It'll You can cough it out. <laughs> I mean, they actually thought, like, there was advertisements, Nikki, on camel cigarettes. You're the choice of most doctors. It was in Time magazine. It's crazy. I mean, they thought smoking was good for you. I remember the day my dad came home. It was in 1962. I was 10 years old. And my dad came home and he took his pack of bucking hats. No filter on the cigarette. And right in front of the whole family, he opened up the waste paper basket and he said, he dropped them in, Nikki, into the waste paper basket. He said, I'm never going to smoke another cigarette again. I said, Dad, whose cigarettes am I going to steal? You know, I always had sort of a sense of humor, right? <laughs> but he, he said, you know, I just read an article on smoking and cancer. That was 1962, Nikki. And you know what? Cholesterol, unfortunately, never went away, even though they found out that heart disease back in the 50s and the 60s, and even today, is still driven by smoking cigarettes. And there isn't a doctor in the world that will tell you to smoke a cigarette today, but they will tell you not to eat bacon and eggs because they still blame cholesterol for being the boogeyman. It's not true. It was never true. If you want to die young, lower your cholesterol because cholesterol is really the FedEx trucks, the Amazon trucks, the, the, uh, the Canada Post or whatever of your blood. You know, you never blame a policeman for being at a crime scene, Nikki. You don't blame the fireman for being at a fire, of course, they're the good guys. They're not the bad guys. Cholesterol never, ever, ever once caused a heart attack, ever. It just can't because people got that wrong. Big Pharma found a drug to lower cholesterol. Crestor, Lipitor, Zocor. Lipitor was the number one selling drug of all time. And it was based on a lie. You can't even change people's mind because they, they're, they're hook, line, and sinker. They just can't get their head around. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease. So if you want to know where a vegetarian or a vegan generally come from, it's propaganda. It's not true. And I'm, some do it for religious reasons. I get that. I understand that. But I always used to tell my, my, my vegan friends and vegan patients, vegetarian patients, now you need to, you're going to be low in B12. I don't care what anybody tells you, your B12 will be low. Vitamin B12 is found in red meat. I'm sorry, it's not found in anything else. So if, you know, how can that be right that you wouldn't eat red meat if God gave you a gallbladder and B12 and, 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 and heme iron? H-E-M-E, -E, iron, which is the most absorbable iron, is found in red meat. It's not found in chicken. It's not found in salad. Like Popeye didn't get strong by eating spinach. He lied. That wasn't true. Popeye got strong because he was eating meat. <laughs> That's so awesome. I, I hate to be negative. I don't want to be. I, I know I'm controversial, but I shouldn't be controversial with that. See, and we'll come back to this later because I want to move forward on the track that you've opened up for us. The fact that you're controversial is what's having people listen to you, <laughs> okay? And that's important right now. It's very important. We need our counterculture people. And it's sad to say that 
people who are godly and uh, who are uh, interested in speaking the truth are the counterculture today, but that's the way it is. The so, way it is. So look, I was a vegan for four and a half years in my 20s. I started being a vegan because of a pretty girl. I was single then, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's amazing what women make you oh do. Oh, my goodness. Me. Yeah, she was gorgeous, and I wanted to impress her, and she was vegan. What can I tell you? <laughs> right? um, I stuck with it for four and a half years. I finally quit when I saw that my body was just not doing well with it. I was getting weaker. Yeah. And I had less energy. So I started eating meat. As soon as I started eating meat, my energy came back up. But I still, you know, for the longest time, I ate meat and vegetables. I was in, I was a fitness coach. Um, and I was, I was fit. I worked with Olympic gold medal athletes. I worked with a lot of top CEOs. I, well into my mid forties, I, I was a man with like a body fat around, you know, eight, nine, 10%. I had an eight pack, you know, I look great. Um, but I still ate uh, a lot of things that uh, didn't make sense, according to the, the philosophy that you've taught us. I, I put a lot of ketchup on my meat. I would eat a lot of um, uh, vegetables and I'd have a lot of balsamic vinegar and I'd have a lot of fruit uh, as well. And I still had lots of aches and pains and I got hurt uh, at one point really badly working out and, and, and I started to get whiplash. I couldn't train at all. And I started eating a ton of carbs and from 2015 to roughly just recently, I added a lot more carbs into my diet before I'd only have like oatmeal once a day or something like that. Yeah. Then I started like, actually in 2012, I started to eat more carbs because a friend of mine went vegan and I kind of decided to try it, try aspects of it for a while. I rice and beans and cheese and, and not cheese, um, uh, bread, tons of bread. I just stopped doing all that on September 1st of this year. We're talking today on the 26th, 26th of September. This will come out a little while afterwards, but here's what I noticed. I don't have any joint pain anymore. I none, none, zero. I had a, an Achilles that had been bothering me and I've been doing things to overcome it, including seeing somebody but starting to eat the meat accelerated all that pain disappearing. You know, it, it, it blew me away. I have um, strength. Like I'm 55 years old, Dr. Martin, I'm 50 freaking five years old. And my strength had been going down slightly every year. It's starting to come back. Like yep. I've got, I've got beast like power flowing through my body as a result of this. And the other thing that's pretty impressive is that, you know, I'm not, my, my belly, which had been an eight pack, I'd started to add a, a layer of fat around it. And I don't like it. I still have it there, but it's starting to go down, you know, slower than I would like, I'll admit. Um, but it, it's incredible. And, you know, the thing you say about, you know, steak tastes good, vitamin S. I, I love that vitamin S. I eat my vitamin S. Yeah. I eat steak. I eat lamb chops. I eat burgers. Um, I, eat, I eat fish because I do like fish. Uh, as Beautiful. Well. But it's fantastic. I, I got to say, I I'm enjoying the food that I'm eating. There's never yeah. an issue with it. And I feel great. The only thing that I've had an issue with, and I'd like to ask you why that might be, is if I eat um, if I eat a certain amount of cheese, I don't feel good. Like, I feel like, yeah. yeah. Well, I wonder why and that listen, is. And that's, yeah, and listen, some people are like that. Uh, Nikki, and it, it, it's probably because you have, you know, I don't want to get into too much detail, but you probably have a little bit of a leaky gut. And because of leaky gut, what that is, is that you're, you know, you, you've got trillions of bacteria in your body, and a lot of it is right in your gut. And sometimes what happens, any kind of food intolerance, I find, like people say, hey, doc, I'm lactose intolerant. I said, well, you're really not. It's because you've got leaky gut. You have a change in your microbiome. That might have been caused by years ago of having, you know, antibiotics as a child or whatever. I mean, listen, a lot of things can change the, the gut and you sort of develop a little bit of an autoimmune because what comes down like cheese is, cheese is a wonderful food. I'll tell you why, because it is, it's, it's almost perfect because it has healthy fat high protein, low carb, and a vitamin, K2. See, K2, what it does is it takes calcium 
you're eating in the cheese and it puts it in your bone where you belong. Vitamin K2 is sort of the Rodney danger field of vitamins. People don't know about it, but if you eat cheese and steak and eggs, you get a lot of vitamin K2 and butter. Butter gives you vitamin K2. But anyway, the reason is, Nikki, is look, cut back on your cheese until your gut gets fixed. You're helping your gut by changing your diet. One of the worst things for gut, I tell people this, I saw IBS, I bet you 20, 30,000 times in my office, Nikki, over 46 years. Okay. Wow. I mean, I, it, it was so common, it was unreal. I said, well, look, here's what's irritating your gut. Sugar, honey, <laughs> no, sugar, because <laughs> I called them honey. I said, dear, honey, sugar's killing you. You know why? It's feeding your yeast inside of there. And yeast loves sugar, and that will give you food intolerances because yeast is an invasive species. And a lot of people have yeast in their body. They have no idea it's there and it's causing IBS. Get rid of the sugar. Get rid of wheat. Because I don't care if it's 50 grain wheat. Fifth, oh, doc, I'm eating whole wheat 50 grains. Look, that is going to turn to sugar in nanoseconds. So any bread you're eating, lay off the bread because you're really irritating your gut. You know what the third one was? Oxalates. Oxalates come from veggies. Now listen, I'm not telling you can't have any veggies, but people who live on veggies, they are creating oxalate. Oxalates are an irritant, okay? They are an irritant. Your body doesn't have an enzyme called cellulase to break down, not a rat. I tell people, why are you eating like a rabbit? You're not a rabbit. Rabbits, rabbits eat vegetables. You eat meat. <laughs> you know. And anyway, and the and 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 so I would tell them that, and I said, the, and here's the fourth thing that's killing you: your gut, fiber. Hey, Nikki, you don't win a you don't win a prize for having a big poop. Okay, there's no prize for having having a big. You know, people. Oh, doc, if I don't eat fiber, I don't go to the bathroom. Why are you going to the bathroom so often? Like, you don't win a prize for that. If you have IBS, you're making it worse. Fiber, all it does is irritate the gut. So people didn't realize that. Why? I was told it was good for me. But not if you have IBS. Not if you have digestion. So all I'm saying, Nikki, long story short, come back to a limit. You're eliminating those four things. Cut back on the cheese until your gut is healed. I mean, you've only been in on it for what? What are we? 26, 26 days. days or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So all I'm saying is, Nick, listen, I did this. I created a reset. Yeah. It's a four week, 30 day thing. 30 days. And listen, I did tens of thousands of patients before I even wrote about it because I created that diet to reverse diabetes, put it to bed put it to sleep, put it into remission. And if they do 30 day program, they'll really, the problem, Nick, is this, this is the problem in our society food wise. It's sugar. It's the hormone insulin. It's sugar, my friend, because when I was a kid, I tell my grandchildren, when I was a kid, grandpa had ice cream and cookies too, but Canadians, North Americans were consuming 25 pounds of sugar a year. You know where we're at today, Nick? Almost 200 pounds. Whoa. A dump truck load. Because it's like you said, look at the ketchup. You know, you put ketchup on your meat. The meat is good, but the ketchup is full of sugar. Salad dressings, full of sugar. I get people to read labels. I said, you'll be shocked how much sugar you're eating. And Nikki, the worst thing you can do for yourself is drink sugar. Because people today, oh, Dr. Martin, it's Tropicana. It's Tropicana. It's got fiber. It's orange juice. I said, you know how much sugar is in that? You might as well have two Pepsis. Because your body doesn't know it's Tropicana. All your body knows is how much sugar you're drinking. You know what that does to your insulin response? 
You want to know why? And, and, and Nikki, one other thing. <laughs> the Antichrist of sugars came out in the late 70s, early 80s, made by the food industry. They found a sugar that they could make in the lab, and it's called high fructose corn syrup. And they have eliminated all natural sugar today. You can't find it. From cereal to orange juice to Gatorade to you name it, has high fructose corn syrup in it. And that is the worst sugar that metabolically is the worst thing you can do is to drink that sugar or consume that sugar. Anyway, I go, I go, I'm so passionate Nikki, about this because you don't hear about it. You, you know, you do maybe if you're, if you're scouring the internet or whatever, and you, you'll get some people that think like me, but most training in nutrition, listen, I was there. I teach nutrition and I've got to undo because we don't live in the 1950s anymore. We live in a in a sugar laced world, and we and now we have a new sugar that they don't tell you about. High fructose corn syrup. Cor high fructose must be good for you. Hey man, that's cancer. That will accelerate cancer like nobody's business. And I scream about it because people don't know. They don't know, and so. What you're doing for yourself, Nikki, I cannot encourage you enough because you are setting yourself up for you are gone on the narrow, you're on the narrow road that leads to life. Jesus said that. the broad road that leads to destruction is full of people with good intention. They have good intentions. But they got bad science. So what I try and do is get them off that broad road. I know there's a lot of people on it to the narrow road. You talk to people on the narrow road all, all the time. Those are your listeners. But I want them to be on the narrow road when it comes to their health. I don't care if it's popular or not, which I've got to do with whether it's true or not. I can put diabetes. Imagine. Today, half the population is diabetic or pre-diabetic. And you know what the worst of it is, Nikki? Is diabetes. Go to a mall. Go to a mall and look at the size of people today. If, Nikki, you left the planet, let's say Elon Musk said, hey, you know, in the 1970s, you know, I know he didn't, but let's say, hey, let's go to Mars. And we're going to stay there for until we'll come back in 2022. And let's say we did that, Nikki. Okay. And we came back in 2022. You know what? We, we would, we would be so flabbergasted at the size of people go to the mall today. I don't care if you're in Toronto, in New York, LA, Miami, or Sudbury, where I live, people are big. Why are they big? It's diabetes. It's insulin. It's sugar. It's it's not that complicated, and no wonder, because when insulin goes up, insulin is a food hormone. It causes when insulin is on the rise, speed kills because you see sugar goes into your bloodstream in nanoseconds. Bread goes into your into your bloodstream in nanoseconds. Pastries, milk, I hate milk. Unless you have a cow in your backyard. Because by the time it gets to the grocery store, it's white Pepsi. All I'm saying is, Nikki, it's food. Food is a big, big problem in our health. It's not a lack of Crestor or Lipitor. It's not cholesterol. It's not a lack of fiber. It's sugar. And when you get off of it and carbs turn to sugar, and that's all you got to remember. I don't care, Dr. Martin, it's I'm eating bananas. Yeah, I know, but you might as well be having Smarties. What's the difference? Your body doesn't know the difference. It's too sweet for you. And you have to fix that. So that's me. I'm a proponent of fixing insulin. Insulin is a food hormone, and is if you keep it down, 
you'll live longer. Your brain will live longer. Your, your chances of cancer are reduced. Your chances of heart disease are reduced. Your chances of Alzheimer's. You know what Alzheimer's is? Type 3 diabetes. That's what it is. It, it's not amyloid plaque. They lied to us. That's why they haven't found a medication, Nikki, for Alzheimer's. You know what it is? It's food. It's food, my friend. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You want to know what I, where I, I get so excited? My wife's always going like this. Level it down. <laughs> you're, you're getting too excited, you know? And my voice goes up when I get excited. I can't help myself. I, I think like because we had 11 children, Nikki, in our family. Wow, that's incredible. I, like, I love the passion. I think it's important to speak from passion. That's the only way you're going to persuade the, unper the, the persuadables. And... What you're talking about is starting to gain other uh, messengers in the marketplace and other followers. So Dr. Jordan Peterson and his daughter, Michaela, yeah. Uh, yeah. talked about how eating a carnivore diet cured them of a lot of ailments that they had. Uh, Joe Rogan, the number one podcaster in the world, did the carnivore yeah. diet and said that it helped him lose weight and get rid of a bunch of aches and pains. And yeah, Joe's my age. We're the same age, 55 years old, right? And I read Sean Baker's book, The Carnivore Diet. And he goes deeply into the history of how people were kind of uh, brought from eating a primarily an animal-based diet, megafauna, he called it, back in the, uh, in the days of the uh, woolly mammoth, to the agricultural age. And that's what got us starting to eat grains. And he talks yeah. about people back in those days, they would be eating meat. And once in a while, they'd maybe run into some berries or apples and grab some berries or apples. But that would be like once every three weeks, maybe they'd have like a, a little mini feast of, of sweet. Yeah. And then they wouldn't have any sweet for a while again. Right. They'd be and, eating meat and, again. and Nikki always in season, you know, in season. Right. I mean, think about it in the 1800s or whatever you weren't. You weren't having, if you lived in Canada, you weren't having a banana in the winter. No. It was in season. So it was limited, right? And listen, I love, I, I call fruit God's candies. I yeah. love fruit. Just don't drink it, whatever you do. Yeah, like for me, my plan is I'm going to finish the 30 days. I'm going to continue with uh, this way of eating, you know, carnivore-based way of eating primarily. Um, I may add some veggies to it a little bit, uh, and uh, I, I might uh, have fruit once every couple of weeks. I'll have some berries or an apple. That's about the, the most that I'm going to do. I like the way that I'm eating right now. I like the way my body's starting to feel. I like my strength. I like my energy levels. Uh, I like the fact that I don't have any aches and pains. And Dr. Martin, you got to understand how many decades I've had aches and pains. It's yeah. just incredible. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> And, and, and Nikki, let me give you some other things that are going to happen to you, whether you realize it or not. OK, because remember, I, I, I my my degree was in clinical nutrition, meaning that I saw real patients, right, with real people, with real. And then I would do blood work. OK, so you have to understand what I would see. Uh, I mean, obviously, blood sugar got better, right, because when I had a diabetic, they were always monitoring their blood sugar and they would, they were shocked how much better their blood sugar would get. And, but I, I would, I would tell them, look, I, you know, blood sugar is, is subject to fluctuation, but you'll notice a much better control. And they had to trust me on that because they were so used to being told, well, look, now that you're diabetic, you have to eat in moderation. And moderation was made up by the food industry. No, no. You have to eat in elimination. Like you, you know what I used to tell a, a diabetic, listen, you have an allergy. What? I said, you have an allergy to what? Carbs. You and carbs don't get along. You got a bad relationship. It's time to get a divorce, you know, <laughs> because you, you, you just can't have carbs. And when you eat carbs, your pancreas isn't working properly. You have insulin problems. You have insulin resistance. So I am going to prove to you that if you trust me, I always used to tell people, look, you gotta trust me for 30 days. Are you, you know, you you spent time, money, whatever to come and see me. And now you're not feeling good, right? The way you did it isn't working. So now let's try my way. 
but you got to trust me. I can't go home with you. I can't make you do it. You got to trust me. And it's not going to be easy, especially if you're a carboholic. My name is Tony and I'm a carboholic. You know what I mean? I used to get up to do that in my office, right? Like I said, man, I, I was in the prison ministry for a long time. And I used to tell, you know, the I, I used to tell, the, I said, you're an addict. You know, like, you know, people incarcerated. I said, you're an addict, right? You know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I said, the first thing in, in healing is admitting it. So he said, put your hand up. My name is Tony and, and I'm a carboholic. Okay, you got that? Right. Now go home. You have an allergy. So stay away from things you're allergic to. You, you're allergic to carbs. You're allergic to sugar. I said, give me 30 days. I'll change your life. Okay. And then I would monitor A1C, which is the, one of the best for looking at insulin resistance. I would watch and you'll notice this. Your triglycerides, what kills you in heart attacks is triglycerides and low cholesterol, HDL. LDL, they made it up. Why? I mean, not that it doesn't exist, but they need, they found a drug to lower LDL. So what did they tell you? Oh, you got high LDL, that'll kill you. No, it doesn't. What kills you is high triglycerides. How do you make triglycerides? Sugar and carbs. Your liver makes triglycerides. Your cells make triglycerides when you're eating too much sugar. So I used to educate my patients. I said, I'm going to monitor that for you. Triglycerides are going to go down. Your HDL is going to go up. Your A1C is going to go down. Your inflammation markers, your CRP, and that's what happened to you already because of your aches and pains are going to go down. And Nikki, the, the proof was in the blood work. Not only they feel better, but I can put it to them. And physicians on board because physicians, the lab has hijacked medicine. The old doctors like my dad used to listen to patients' history. Today they want to, I ah, just give me your lab and I'm going to tell you, right? And look, I'm not against labs, obviously. But I could prove it to physicians with their lab work. And boy, oh boy, that was impressive to them. And many of them would refer patients to me, especially diabetics, because they could trust me that I was working on their blood work to improve their blood work. And, you know, it works. Yeah, amen, 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 amen. Um, I got to say, for me, uh, having discovered this way of eating, having thrown off the blinders, one of the things that's concerning me is that we seem to have certain uh, dark forces in our society right now that are anti us free thinkers that want to try and get rid of meat altogether. There's a whole movement that is trying to force people to eat crickets for crying out loud. There's been this great big plant built in London, Ontario that's processing 9,000 tons of crickets a year. That's 4 billion animals that are grown in there that they're sending for human consumption. And I got to tell you, I have zero interest in eating crickets. I like eating steak. And I think we've got to, we've got to get the word out to people so they understand this is important. And we've got to get the word out to people so that they can push back against the lies they're telling about meat and the lies they're telling about how this is impacting you know, climate change. And I got to tell you, climate change in the 70s, I'm, you know, old enough to, I was born in 1967. I'm old enough to remember when they talked about global cooling, that was the big deal. Yeah. Well, when that didn't yeah. happen, they talked about global warming. And well, global warming and global cooling change. Like, okay, well, let's now start calling it climate change. Any change? Like, are you kidding me? Listen, the world yeah. is changing. I get it. And humans have an impact on it. I get that too. But I wonder why they don't talk about the impact that nature has on these things. We've had ice ages. We've had the whole planet be covered in ice. It's the height of arrogance to think that we are more powerful than Mother Nature. <laughs> because yeah. it's not true. It's just yeah. not. Mother Nature can choose and to wipe us out in a nanosecond. And I wonder yeah. what and your thoughts are on this. How we can spread the word and how we can help people keep eating meat as a way of life alive. Well, listen, Nick, and I, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Nikki, because you have no idea 
okay? The impact of one person, okay? And especially, Nikki, with you, when you think of you yourself as an individual, look at the venue that you have. List, look at the listeners that you have. And you see, for me, that's a privilege. When I did radio, Nikki, I had a very popular show, a syndicated show. And when I was in practice, it was individuals. I, I would get individuals to turn. And it's amazing, though. You know, what did Jesus do with 12 people, Nikki? What did Jesus do with 12 people? He turned the world upside down, didn't he? Yeah. Absolutely. Recorded history. And all I'm saying, Nikki, when you, God has given you a platform, which he has, he's given me a platform. Look at, I know what the agenda is. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, optimistic that it's going to change anytime soon. But what I do is I give people information. When you give people information, they can make choices. You see, they only hear one side and the, you know, mainstream media and you know, you know, politicians, they seem to be all into bed together. But that doesn't make it true. All I'm saying is the truth will set you free. So I preach from my soapbox. I tell people and I... I have a. I thank God for my podcast that I do every day. My son said to me a couple of years ago, he said, Dad, when you're out of practice, okay, I'm putting you on a podcast, okay? I podcast? What are you talking about? I don't, I'm a dinosaur. I don't know what a podcast is. I know what radio is. I know what television is. No, no. He said, Dad, podcasts are going to be really popular. I Trust me on this. So guess what? You know, we just hit our millionth download the other day. And you know what? I think I'm very thankful about that. I told my listeners, listen, you're going to hear, you're going to get it from all sides that what I'm teaching you is wrong. But use, use the brain that you have been given and you decide for yourself what's true. And I said, for me, I can prove it. So when I can prove things to myself, to, to my patients, I proved it to them. And I, I proved this reset diet, a 30 day program. And there's a reason it's 30 days. It takes 30 days to get rid of insulin resistance. It only takes six days to empty your liver. And I, if I had two hours, Nikki, I'd tell you about your liver. It's not Las Vegas. You know what stays what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in your liver is what turns your metabolic health around. It will makes you, it'll make you sick or very healthy. And, and it's all comes down to food. If you don't start there, you're in deep doo-doo, in my opinion. You have to start with food. And so you have a you have a soapbox, you have a venue. Nikki, I've listened to your 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 podcast. I'm I'm a, a, a disciple. I love what you do. So you preach it, man. I'll preach it. And then you get other people, like you say, the Joe Rogans of hey, is there anybody more popular than him? No. And you know what? You can imagine how he is, you know, mainstream media don't like that guy. But the truth will set you free. And that's the way I look at it. I'm as long as God's given me breath, I'm going to preach it. And when I, you know, when, when, but I, if you're waiting for me to change my mind, good luck on that. I, I've been, like I said, I watched my dad and that was in the sixties. And here we are in 2022, I'm 70 years old and I ain't changing soon. If you're not eating meat, you're making a big mistake. Amen. Brother. Steak. Mistake. Mistake. I love it. I love it. Vitamin S, my favorite vitamin. Uh, <laughs> so this morning for breakfast, I had uh, lamb chops. Uh, um, three of them were just uncovered. Three of them were uh, from, uh, they had this Moroccan kind of thing on them. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking to buy meat without anything on it as much as I can. And then I just put salt and pepper on it. That's, that's what I'm going with it. 
but there are still some that I've, that, that I've bought because that's, that's what's available and I need the meat. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm super thrilled to be doing this. So Dr. Martin, we like to end off each episode by asking you as our guest expert for what we call our, our, our three bullet point expert action steps. These are your best pieces of life, health, business advice. And let's, you've given us a lot of health advice. So let's have this advice be in terms of how can you as, a, as an entrepreneur stand out? Like what are the ways in which you can be authentically you that you can stand out? What are your best three pieces of advice that way? And then we'll I, wrap I up. And three, I'm going to have you I back because got... we need to book the next episode for two hours. You're right. And I want to bring your son on as well. So let's make sure we do that. Okay. Three. Listen, I, I, I didn't make this up, but it's been a big part of my life. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you three things. If you want to be a success, you need the three D's desire. That's up here. You start with a dream, right? You start with a dream, even in health. I tell people visualize yourself being healthy visualize it because your mind is very very powerful it really is get rid of the stinking thinking you know i listened to one of your guests the other day that said uh why and she said what why not right yeah yeah didn't i, I mean, like that yeah wasn't that great yeah, no it it's awesome. great advice why not hey listen i don't care if you're 80 years old and you're listening to this today you can change but you need the desire to change OK, I, I listened to um, I listened. This is years ago, a guy talking about how he got through the uh, German concentration camp. He was it, he was in Auschwitz and he said, you know, what got me through was me dreaming that I was an audience. How I survived in the concentration camp. He said, I dreamt it that I would go public and tell the world what happened to me. And guess what? He did. Secondly, first one is desire. Now you need to transfer it, Nikki, 18 inches to the heart. And that is determination. I tell people, look, it's great to have a desire. It's great to have a dream. But now you need to be determined. You need to be determined. These are things that will now transfer to your heart. As for me, I don't care what the rest of the world is doing. Here's what I'm going to do. That is a heart change. It's 18 inches from the brain. And the third one, Nikki, is this. Discipline. You can never, ever, ever be successful in life without discipline. That is the everyday Every day, doubling down on your goals, discipline, saying, hey, look, it takes work to be a success in life. It does. And but is it ever rewarding? Nikki, you know that if someone is under your care, Nikki, thinking of all the coaching you've done, have you ever seen them ever be a success without them disciplining themselves? Never. Right. Desire. Uh huh. Determination for sure. Discipline. That's in the trenches. That's when all the naysayers come around you and tell you, oh, you know what? You're wasting your time. You're never going to do it. You know, the people who think they have a gift of discouragement, those are the, that stuff you get, you get rid of the, of that. I don't listen to those voices. I, I am disciplined on a daily basis and I have been. All my life, you know, guess who was the most disciplined person I ever watched in my life? My dad. Getting up, you know, here's what he did with me, Nick. I'll end with this. Dad, you're, you're running. Are you crazy? You know, but about a month later, I said, Dad, wake me up in the morning. I want to go with you. Come and get me. I was 18 years old or 70. Come and get me, Dad. Wake me out of bed. I'll go with you. I love my dad so much. And what a what a habit I got into getting into shape and staying in shape the rest of my life and eating properly. Nick, those are my little threes. <laughs> Three expert action steps of Dr. Tony Martin. I love it. So listener, Dr. Martin is the real deal. 
So if you want to find out more about his work, I recommend you go to his website. I think it's the, it's the Martin Clinic website, right? Is it Martin yeah, Clinic? MartinClinic.com. Yeah. MartinClinic.com. Yeah. Or okay. my podcast, The Doctor Is In. And listen, I recommend you buy his book, The Martin Clinic Reset. That's the book I bought. I read it in 24 hours. Honestly, as soon as I got it, I couldn't put it down. And the moment I was done reading it, I said, okay, screw it. I'm going to do this for 30 days. Let's make it happen. I mean, the worst thing that will happen is it won't work and I won't do it again. But if it works, that'd be the best thing. So I recommend you go to the martinclinic.com. You get the Great Reset book. I think it's like... $14.97 $14.97 Canadian. It's 15 bucks. Yeah, yeah. It gets download. You download it right away. I mean, it is a, it is a bargain and a half. Make sure you grab yourself a copy and you take care of that. And listen, if you got value out of this episode, listener, share this with someone who needs to hear the message. You probably yeah. know somebody with some aches and pains. You probably know somebody who is wondering what the heck they need to do to turn their health around. You probably know somebody who loves steak, but thinks they shouldn't be eating it. This episode is going to help them overcome all the stigma they have around steak. And they're going to enjoy eating steak. And it's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing. And make sure that you do that. Because what Dr. Martin has to say, this is important stuff. And people need to listen to his message. People need to listen to the types of people that we're bringing on the show. Because these are the folks that are going to give you everything you need to live life as the best version of yourself. To grow your business so you're not stuck and wondering why no one wants to do business with you. So you got people that are interested in doing business with you. You get to grow your business. You get to add an extra 100,000, quarter million, half a million, a million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 million to your annual income because you deserve that. God wants that for you and I want that for you. Dr. Martin, thank you so much for being my guest on the show. It was an honor to have you on the show. I enjoyed every minute of it, Nikki. I hope I didn't didn't, uh, talk too much. (laughs) <laughs> oh my, I can just listen to you talk all day. So talk again. And that wraps up another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. To find out more about today's incredible guest, the one and only Dr. Tony Martin, go to the show notes at thethoughtleaderrevolution.com or on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, Audible for Amazon, anywhere that the podcasts are, are, are being listened to. That's where you can find us. The show notes are there. Make sure you take advantage of it. Until next time. Goodbye. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice.